So William, are you ready for a new episode of Garden Time? <laughs> oh, I am Judy, <laughs> warts and all. Welcome to Garden Time. We are out here at the wonderful French Prairie Gardens where you can pick up a wonderfully unique pumpkin for your own place and we'll also take you to the Pig Tucky Derby. And also coming up in the show, we'll be planting peonies. But coming up first, fall lavender. Well, we are on one of those beautiful, sunny fall days that we get here sometimes in the Pacific Northwest. So we are out here with Chris at Barn Owl Nursery. And Chris, we are gonna be talking about lavenders. Uh, we're used to seeing them in summertime and they're beautiful and everybody loves them, but you're a big fan of planting them now. So before we talk about doing that, let's talk about some of these varieties that you've picked for us and why you love them. Well, I've chosen a cross of an English lavender and it's called Ana Luisa. It was developed in Oregon and it has nice silver gray foliage right. for the winter. So we're looking at this to be put into the uh, garden now and then uh, have blooms by next June. Lovely, lovely. And what is this stunning thing that's already blooming? Yes, this is the second bloom on Pastor's Pride. And if it is cut back regularly, it will continue to bloom even longer after June and July and into the fall. And you know, there's such a variety of, of lavenders now available. So go over some of these smaller four inch ones that you have. Mm -hmm. Some of your favorites. And well, why. Opal Rain is another one that was developed in Oregon and it has a unusual, as you can tell, white bud that opens up into a light pink white. And Opal Rain is a, a nice silver foliage as well, a strong stem, a longer stem than some and a wonderful sweet scent lovely, to the lavender. Lovely, lovely indeed. In fact, I see a lot of silver foliaged ones here. Yes. Does that get more intense in the, in the fall and winter? We will see that. Once we cut back and have harvested in June and July in the fall, we're going to see some uh, hardened off growth that um, will be more silver than gray. Beautiful, so go, tell me more about them. And so another one is Peter Pan, which has an exceptionally dark bud and opens also to a dark flower. And um, I like it for culinary purposes, but when we harvested it, uh, it dries very well and stays on the stem. So is there an, a, a selection, I heard you say a smaller one, this, this is true for all sizes, you, all of these can be going in the ground? Yes, and pastures, uh, pride and Peter Pan can mm -hmm. also be put in a large barrel, could be oh, a container lovely, grown lavender. Lovely. And uh, 15 to 18 is considered a semi-dwarf. Another one is Laden Blue. It's a little bit larger, but has that nice deep purple bud right. and flower. And um, would be good, again, for a culinary bud as well as drying to stay on the stem. Forever Blue is a brand new one. I don't have it in the ground myself yet, but it has a longer stem than many of the English lavenders, again, with that nice dark bud. Stunning. Another one that's a little more silver is Mitchum Gray. I love that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then this has a bit more green to it. What is this Rebecca one? K. Yes, yeah, a little greener, but yet uh, longer stemmed, uh, and it's known to bloom twice. Wow, wow. So again, so will, will all lavenders, if you prune them at the proper time, will they rebloom generally? Especially at least with once? the warm weather we've been having. Then you really get them. Mm -hmm. So in hopes for having future blooms on our lavender, let's talk about planting lavenders mm -hmm. because you know we have not discussed this i don't think ever on the show about doing lavenders in the fall mm -hmm. but you're suggesting this is the best time to do it i think it is because then you know you're going to have flowers on the after they go through right. a winter right. they are established and you will have winters in june and july or winters flowers <laughs> in june <laughs> well, and july well they, they'll, they'll be blooming in winter <laughs> in our minds anyway. yes they will and uh, <laughs> And it's a great time because you don't have to water quite as much once we right. have rain. Yeah, right. So Chris, using this plant, you know, show us, show us the best ways to plant them at this time of year. Well, you want to go ahead and put it in your well-drained soil uh -huh. and plant it just to the base where it is in the pot, right. not any deeper than that. And if you need better drainage, you would put, raise the mound or put it in a raised bed. And you want to look for a nice uh, root system to begin with and a nice bushy plant with Take lots of foliage at the base. There you go. So oh, we yeah. Have a, yeah, yeah, that's a heavy root That system. is, and we break it up a little bit so that the roots have a chance to spread out into the earth and um, soil, and then um, just leave it till next spring. 
Well, and you know, I see right to the uh, left side of you, there is a pot that has a stunning lavender in it right now. And it's blooming. Yes. What, what should we be doing with ones that look like this to get ready for fall? Spanish lavender, after uh, you see that the flowers are spent or lost their color, go ahead and cut down just a long stem, but not all the way to the base. And, uh, and just plan on that that will put on a tiny bit of new growth that will get hardened off this fall before we have winter. Mm -hmm. And it should be fine. And uh, this has been pruned twice now wow. to be fuller. And Chris, the benefit for, for pruning this again at this time of year is so that in the spring they don't get floppy. Correct. And also just to get it ready for winter. If we had a heavy snow, um, it right. would possibly break off those stems or branches. Well, there you have it. So, you know, uh, although I know that you are closed at this time of year, you still will have people, if they give you a call, they'll come out and, and chat with you and buy stuff. Is that it? Yes, right? we Wonderful. are open by appointment only, and we are taking orders for plants to go in the ground this fall as well as next spring. Superb. Well, there you have it for information. We will always invite you to go to gardentime.tv and we'll click over to the website. Chris, delightful. Thank you so much Thank for you. your expertise on this. Thank you. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terra Casa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terra Casa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terra Casa. Terra Casa in downtown Damascus. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. Now is the time for Bartlett Tree Experts and Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. Our free consultation will help to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees. We can help address problems before they occur. Whether it's trees or shrubs, we can help you get a healthy and beautiful garden. Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts, providing environmentally safe tree care since 1907. Fall is a time to think of planting and planning. Planting new plants now will help them get a jump start on next year. Black Gold All Purpose can help your plants get ready for winter and next spring. Formulated with a blend of natural and organic nutrients, it contains everything your plants and spring bulbs need for a happy and healthy start. Look for Black Gold All Purpose at your local garden center or nursery. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. So I am out here with Stacy at French Prairie Gardens, and Stacy clearly fall has landed here at your place. It's oh, lovely. Yes. Yes. So one of the things I wanted to jump right into, first of all, you have a great selection yes. of pumpkins. Yes. Tell me, first of all, how many of you guys grow? We grow over 30 different varieties, and then we also grow squash and gourds, so there's lots of different things to choose from yeah. for your fall decor. And then just tell me, you, you have to have one that is your favorite, because I certainly do. Tell My me personal that. favorite is this new one, and it is just great. I love all the bumps on it, um, and then it's even nice because this one has the green in it too. Yeah, yeah. So, but. And instantly I love this tricolor one. The minute yes. I saw it, I went, that is so super yeah. cool. Yeah. And the thing I love about the availability of these, because not only because they're really different and unique, but you guys still have all of the great stuff that we think about for fall generally Oh too. yes, yeah, yeah. So we'll have the corn stalks and we also grow mums, but then, you know, we also still have the garden center in full swing. Right, so right. we have perennials and shrubs to, choose from if something happened to die this last summer that you need to replace. Um, you so still are available to, to do that. Oh, yes. And let's not forget, you still have the wonderful food inside oh, as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Bakeries open. We have pies and pumpkin bars and all sorts of goodies this time of year. But you know, every year, you guys, since I think 2002, you've had a wonderful derby. Let's go out there and see what's all going right, on. All right. Sounds good.
So, Stacy, that is the Derby. It is. It is. <laughs> it's our Pig Techie Derby, and we've been doing it for years and years. And you really, it's very unique. I mean, it, you can't go someplace else oh, and yeah. see this. Oh, yeah. Yep. The only ones in Oregon were the only ones that do pig races in Oregon. Oh, that's absolutely yep. hysterical. Yep. So, tell me, that, that only happens on the weekends, though, right? Yes. Yep. The, that's one of our weekend activities, and what's great about it is there's a little, little skit that my dad and my brother do, Farmer John and Farmer Eric, and they talk they kind of teach you about the pigs uh -huh. and then they do some fun corny pig jokes and then you'll see the pigs run around the track and it's all sorts of fun. But the, on the weekends everything is open. All the stuff yes, that's happening. Yep. Tell me a little bit about all the, the activities. Stuff. Oh yeah, we have giant slides and we have obstacle course. We have the pig barrel train rides, the tractor wagon ride, and of course you can visit the pumpkin patch to purchase pumpkins. And you've got a corn maze. Yes, yeah. corn maze, screen maze, for the young maze. and the old. I mean, oh yeah. So it's more than one. Oh, yes. Three and then, of course, if people get hungry, they can always go inside and get some yes, food. Yes, yes, yep, yep. Our farmer's fries open. We have uh, fresh curly fries, hand-dipped corn dogs, everything for your heart's desire. Well, you know, Judy and I have actually been to this derby before, and we thought it was hysterical and so much fun. So for more information on how you can get all of the things that are happening out here, go to Gardentime.tv, and we will click you over to their website and come out and have a blast at the pig. Kentucky to pick Tucky Derby. I'll get that right someday, won't I? Because it really, it'll make you laugh a lot. <laughs>
And these are the tools that we use for dividing. And Carol, you suggest even, <laughs> even to the home gardener, when you dig any peony up to do some pruning, wash it off so you really see what's there, right? Well, it's a good idea, especially if it's an expensive one, sure. so you yeah. can <laughs> feel more comfortable with what you're doing. So you want to leave some pieces with eyes on some pieces and these, with roots. And these little white things here are the eyes? Those are the eyes, okay. and those are going to make the stems and the leaves and the flowers for next year. And then what is your goal? What are you looking for with each of the uh, stems with eyes well, on it? We, we want to leave some good root mass with it. Uh huh. We'll see how we can get that out of there. I feel like I should help, but I don't know how. <laughs> I've got it all the way. I think it's pretty well affixed to this one. Uh huh. And we have another one over here. I think we can cut off pretty. And easily. so you're not really seeing. You're not saying, "Oh, this is the one I have to do this with." You're kind of letting the the whole root system tell you what needs right. to be cut. Okay. Sometimes you can get some big ones, wow. but sometimes you get some small ones too. So. And would you consider this one? Th this could be replanted just like this, then. Well, it could, but. We're going to cut the... Oh, you're just pruning off some of the we're length gonna of it. take them. off some of the length so that it gets the idea that it's supposed to start growing, growing again. again. And, and then would you transplant it now at mm, this time? Yes. And so you can plant it like that and cover it up probably about to here. Uh-huh. And it'll just take off. And one fellow today called and he was thrilled because his first year plant that he planted last fall tree peony bloom for him already. Oh, really? And his friends thought that was unheard of. <laughs> well, it's not now, is it? So maybe uh, we're going to have to grab hold of this and pull. I'm very good at helping. So what we're going to do is take a break while we work on this and get it apart, OK? So now, Carol, from that one massive plant, you've come up with five really large ones and one little one that you're going to give your granddaughter to work on, you said. But tell me about um, now that the transplanting concept, what is it that you would use to amend the soil before you put these in? Well, we use a low nitrogen fertilizer, like a tulip daffodil fertilizer. That works really well. Um, and in Western Oregon, we have acid soil. So we add a cup of lime or dolomite to the planting hole to sweeten it up a little bit. And then... And so you would set the plant down like this. The roots actually could be a little bit shorter. Uh -huh. And and cover it up to these bottom eyes here. And it will make more growth next year. And then possibly next year it'll set out more, more stems. Uh, they're not like a tree rose. They shouldn't be just a one stem plant. Yeah, they yeah. should be a multi-stem plant. And if you get a plant that has old, weak stems, you could cut it down to the ground level and it will put up sprouts beside okay. it so that you'll have a and what about invigorated. You, you really think, especially with tree peonies, they should be on their own root system is best for them. Yes, because if you live in a really cold climate, then if they die down in the winter, they'll come back up as the same thing as opposed to a grafted one, which sometimes the herbaceous graft will take over. Sure, sure. Well, you know, we always come out here in the spring and we see these breathtaking blooms from peonies, but the reality is sometimes you gotta do a little work in the fall to get ready for those beautiful blooms in the spring. For more information on all kinds of information on peonies, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to Carol's uh, peony website. Carol, thank you so much for your time, my friend. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. They had to take the car, they had to get it open with the jaws of life, take me out on a backboard, took me to a Trauma One Center. I absolutely feel like the Subaru saved my life. Well, we, we trust Capital. We trust our salesperson here, Jackie. Jackie's great. I believe that she really cares about us. She teaches me about the Subaru. Our, our way, way on, on the, the parkway. parkway. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Owl's Garden and Home. Our biggest sale of the year is on now. You'll find huge discounts throughout the store. Save big on perennials, trees and shrubs, houseplants and more, including patio furniture and pottery. 
don't miss it. Our biggest sale of the year is on now. Al's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and Wilsonville. A destination farm and garden market featuring the very best each season has to offer. Smith Berry Barn offers seasonal farm fresh fruits and vegetables and specialty herbs and perennials. Visit the historic barn for distinctive gifts, gourmet foods, and homemade milkshakes. Here's what we have to offer this week. Currently available, multiple varieties of tomatoes, apples, and pears. Centrally located off of Shoals Ferry Road between Sherwood and Hillsboro. Smith Berry Barn, growing good taste from the ground up. Well, it's that time of year to start decorating your home for the fall harvest. I'm with Rachel Biggie from Al's Garden Center. And so, Rachel, you've done a beautiful job here. So tell us about how we can do this, too, at our homes. Yeah. So over here, we got some pumpkins with the orange coloring, and we got a gourd that adds to the color that you get with fall coming, orange and yellow. We also got a mum here. Pretty. And a white pumpkin. That's very unusual. You don't usually see those, so that's kind of fun. And then some ornamental corn really kind of um, put it all together. Yeah. Let's go see this other decoration over here. Mm -hmm. So here we got the camellia along with some corn stalks that add to the height of the whole display. We got some more fall colors with the red mum along with some small gourds and some ornamental corn. And then I see a blue pumpkin. So really, you have so many different kind of pumpkins yeah. at the store. And to really make it easy for all of us, Al's has a decorator kit that we can get all of these things with a plant and take it home. Yep, all four stores. And so there's a story about your family kind of helping grow all of this. So what's that about? Well, we plant everything and have to weed them as they grow and then pick them. It's a really a big family <laughs> event to get everything out. And really that's your college fund too, so that's really wonderful that you can do that and then everybody at Elves helps support that. Yeah. That is great. And then you do a lot of different things. So you're going to school, you grow all this, and then you also do some things for our community and communities around the world, so what's that? Um, recently I have decided to do a shoe drive through an organization called Souls for Souls. And what they do is they collect shoes, worn and new shoes, and they deliver them to people around the world who need them. Wow, and so can we help with that? Yeah, um, if you bring any worn, lightly worn or new shoes to any of the Owl stores and just drop them off, it'll change someone's life. Uh, and you'll be collecting for the next few weeks? Yep. And then I also heard that you are gonna be going with your mom on a trip next spring. I am, super excited. We're going to the Dominican Republic and we get to give them shoes and wash their feet. Oh wow, so you really get to find the whole full cycle of bringing the shoes from America down there and then also um, giving them to the people that really need them. Yeah. That is so wonderful. You're really a sweet soul to do all that and um, we're so glad that we can help. So go to Gardentime.tv, we'll click you over to the OWL's website and you can find out how you can help support Rachel and this wonderful Souls to Souls. Thanks so much. Thank you. At Garden Time, we love bringing you new and interesting things. And so I'm with Jeff at the Portland Ashwagandha Farm. And this is an ashwagandha root. And so tell us about it. It's really an interesting new thing for us. Mm. Ashwagandha is known as Indian ginseng. It's the queen of the herbs in the Ayurvedic tradition. It soothes the nerves and has countless um, benefits for humans uh, in a stressful world. Uh, we grow it to help people relax and be strong in these modern stressful times. And so here we're in the Portland area and you're growing it and so it's interesting that it can be grown in India and then also here. So what is the process of growing it? Well we seed our ashwagandha in the, in the early spring. Uh, starting in March we put it into trays. Uh, we grow it out until June so we, we give it a whole lot of soil. Wow. We, mm -hmm. we do kind of a deep dish tray. Uh, we grow it for about three months in the tray. We transplant it into the earth in the first half of June. From the 1st to the 15th, we try to get everything in the ground. And then we just uh, maintain the, the crop until September, October after the equinox. And then we'll begin to harvest uh, very soon. Today is uh, the 1st of October and we will begin to harvest next week. Oh, wow. So it's a pretty big plant for that short a time. It, it really likes it out here. Well, it likes the heat, so ah, nice. um, they say that uh, summer doesn't start here in the Willamette Valley until the 4th of July these days. <laughs> so 
Uh, so we, we wait for that, uh, that heat to come. Once the soil warms up, just like a tomato or a pepper, it likes that, that warmth. And it's in that same family, so that's really interesting. And so you like to sell at the Beaverton Farmer's Market, you sell the fresh herbs once you've harvested. So how would we, we would take it home and how would we prepare it to give us the benefits? Well, there's countless ways to prepare ashwagandha. Uh, a couple of years ago, we made ashwagandha tomato sauce. Uh, one of the traditional methods of preparation is to chop it up and simmer it in fresh cow's milk. You can also use vegetable milk if you prefer, and it's great for before bed to help you relax and sleep very well. It's also good for the day for strength and stamina or mental focus and clarity for studying or work, all the, all the things. And then what about the foliage? Is that healthy too and beneficial? The science about the leaf is just coming to be more understood. There was a Japanese study last year that found the leaf is better for, for some of the sleeping benefits. Um, it's also good for uh, countless other things. Um, so the leaves have a lot of uh, benefits as well. Ah, so it's ongoing research. That's really interesting. It's one of the most studied plants in the world and we're finding more and more every day about uh, the depth of uh, benefits of ashwagandha. And I know that one of your kind of buzzwords is goosebumps. So tell us a little bit about the, the goosebumps. Well, part of the goosebumps is the warm, relaxing that ashwagandha provides. The other form that I receive goosebumps on a regular occasion is when people come and tell me their story with ashwagandha. There's two classes of people that are highly benefited. That's people with trouble sleeping and people with thyroid issues. Um, these people come and talk about how ashwagandha has changed their life for the better. And for me, whenever, whenever we offer the ashwagandha, we always invite people to come back and tell us the story of what happened. Sure. Um, it's really the goosebumps and the, the feeling of helping each other that keeps me going in this work. Ah, that is right. That must be so beneficial to you too. There's a lot of work <laughs> that I used to do that didn't make my heart sing and growing ashwagandha helps my heart sing through helping others. Ah, that is wonderful. So you can go to the Beaverton Farmer's Market and find Jeff, and especially during this time when he has harvested the roots. So go to gardentime.tv, we'll click you over to their website and you can find out all that information. Really interesting. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Bless you. Well, thank you so much for watching Garden Time today, and we wanted to say a big thank you to French Prairie Gardens for letting us hang out and actually watch that wonderful Pig Tucky Derby. We also want you to stick around because we have a special coming up from the Fall Home and Garden Show next. Judy and I look forward to seeing this all happen again next week, right here on Garden Time. Your center for home and garden decor, Garden Gallery Ironworks has everything you need to make your home a showcase. For the inside, we have a great selection of Kelly Ray Roberts items, and our farmhouse style department is full of one-of-a-kind gifts. For the outside, we have arbors, trellises, planting beds, and garden decor. Everything to make your neighbors jealous. Check out our new website, and then come visit us in Hubbard. Garden Gallery Ironworks. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.